Welcome to my lecture online. Remember what we were trying to do. We were trying to show that the additional action required to travel an alternate path could be calculated using this equation by using the concept of the Lagrangian. And so what we're going to do then is show that this is indeed equal to zero if we're not on an alternate path, if we're indeed on the path of least action. So that's required that if we take an alternate path, but that additional calculation that comes, or the initial action calculated from taking the alternate path is equal to zero, then we're actually on the alternate path. So how we're going to do that? Well, as follows. We're going to define the change in x dot. Remember, x dot is the x dt, so I can write that the change in the x dt. And by definition, the x dt can be written as the limit of x when we add delta t to that minus x when we have t divided by delta t as the limit of delta t goes to zero. This is simply the definition of the derivative using the limits. If we then take the change in that, that can then be brought into the limit calculation. But instead of x, we have the change in x. So here we have the change in x from t plus delta t minus the change in x of t over delta t. And that means that the change in x dot can be written as the ddt of delta x. So now that we have that relationship, we can then go back and define this equation right here. Now notice that this here is the second part of the equation. We have to figure out to write that in a different form. So if we take this second part of the integral and write it over here, but now we have a delta x dot, well we have a different expression for that. We can replace the delta x dot by this. So now this portion of the integral over here cannot be written like this. So instead of writing delta x dot, we write the ddt of delta x. Now, what is that integral equal to? Well, let's come over here and notice we have the delta l delta x dot times delta x. And we take the ddt of that. So essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and this is taking the derivative of this particular expression. For a while there you may say, well why in the world are we doing that? Well, hang with us and we'll see in just a moment. So here we're actually taking the derivative of a product. And to use the product rule, we take the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now, when you take a look at this portion right here. Does that look familiar? Well, let's see here. Does it look familiar? Well, it is, hmm, it is this, this expression right here. This is equal to this. Now what that means is we can take this on one side and take this, move to the other side, so this can be written as this minus this component. So let's do that. Let's replace this quantity right here by this minus this. So in other words, this here is the integral Notice that this is the integrand right there, that's exactly the same, and we subtract from that this. Now since we have the integral of that, we take the integral of this minus the integral of that, and that's what we have written right there. Now notice that here we take the integral of a derivative. Now the integral of the derivative, that cancels and we just get the integrand, but we have to evaluate it from t1 to t2. But notice that has the delta x in there. The delta x is the difference between the original path and the alternate path. And of course, that difference goes to zero at the endpoints. At T1 and T2, that difference goes to zero, so this whole thing goes to zero, which means that this integral can then be written as this integral. And remember, this integral right here was actually the second part of the integral we're trying to set equal to zero. So what we're going to do now is, we say that this integral right here, which is the second part of this integral, cannot be written like this. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this part of the integral and replace it by this, and then we're going to clean it up, and then we're going to be able to show that that integral is indeed equal to zero, which means that if you take an alternate path, and that difference is equal to zero, you're actually on the real path of least action. And so that's the next step. Sub sub uh, substitute this for this, and see how that changes our integral, and then we should be able to show that that integral is indeed equal to zero if we're on the path of least action.